What's up guys, it's Jack McDeal and MLB Talk 1, 2, 3 here with a new show called MLB All Access where it's just me and the viewers. That is right, you can message or comment below, we'll hook you up to get on the show and you can talk about your favorite team or ask a question baseball related. Now here it is, the first headline of the day is Carlos Lee. Now the Marlins have gotten little to no first base production from Gabby Sanchez and a few others they have tried out. He's gone to the minors, he's, he's improved but he's not there. They have gotten little to no, again, production. So they need to go out and get a first base. Again, Marlins have had a very disappointing year so far. They need some offense production to uh, back up Stanton, who is now hurt. Total different story, unrelated at this point. Right now, we're going to focus on the Marlins acquiring Carlos Lee and who they had to give up for him. Matt Dominguez, who was a top prospect a few years ago, first round pick in 2007, right now only projects to be a backup third baseman or a solid defender there. It comes in late innings. He might figure it out now that the Astros are just kind of letting him go, seeing how he does. Hopefully he produces, can maybe be the third baseman for the future for the Astros. We'll see how he does. Uh, he, I mean, he's got his first hit as an Astro and see, they're kind of just letting him go and see what he can do. Uh, but no, he does not project to be an all-star or anything like that. Uh, Rob Rasmussen just projects to be a reliever, a solid left-handed reliever. Um... I mean, really a pretty good pickup for the Astros for a guy who, you know, is costing him a lot of money and he's not going to help them get a World Series or anytime soon. The Astros are rebuilding, obviously, so a good pickup there as they paid for most of Carlos Lee's remaining salary. Now, staying on the topic of the Marlins, let's talk about someone who has already been in the news a lot involving the All-Star Game. And if you're the MLB, you love this. I mean, the All-Star Game was literally meaningless until the press has played it up so much because of this drama. And it's gotten people talking. That's what MLB wants. They want you to talk about the all-star process, how the players vote, because there was early player voting. That explains how guys like Brian LaHare got in. Another guy like Lance Lynn, yes, he's had a fantastic season, but he's also gotten the most run support than any other pitcher. So you see guys like Johnny Cueto, who should be an all-star, Zach Greinke. I mean, there's the list goes on and on who should be an all-star that aren't. I mean, there's a lot of snubs this year. But again, with the player voting, there's a lot of different aspects of that. But here, the Marlins, John Carlos Stan, he's announcing he will have surgery out four to six weeks. He was the only member of the Marlins to represent them, and now he is out, and they replace him with someone who is not a Marlin. They replace him with Bryce Harper. So obviously, the Marlins fans and owner are upset. So more drama caught there. And honestly, I mean, I don't know any Marlin that stands out that should be an all-star, but I think it's obviously, if you're going to make a rule that you have to be represented, you probably should be represented. Um, but again, it's very last minute, so he could argue that. And he was represented. You know, he can still say he's an all-star, but he just doesn't play. You know, there's a lot of different things there. Um, so we'll see what happens there. But going into trade rumors, Wani Rodriguez could be going to the Orioles. But again, he could be going to any other team. It's very early in the trade deadline. The buyers and sellers will develop. But Wani Rodriguez... Uh, I've kind of been a fan of the guy as a Cardinal fan. I'm a fan of them trying to acquire him, and I think they probably will try at least. Um, he would take a few mid-level prospects. I mean, you're looking for the Orioles sense. You're looking at guys like Brian uh, Matsu or Jake Arrieta. Uh, kind of a high, uh, steep price there, but Juan Rodriguez, again, under contract for a year or two. A uh, high salary if the Astros agree to pay for a lot of it. I think that the, the Orioles might be willing to give up Jake Arrieta, guys like that, for who could really help out this team. You know, again, they just have to gauge whether they're going to seriously contend for the wild card or second wild card. If they think so, I think they should go for it. I really do. I think he could fit really nicely right behind Jason Hamill in that rotation. Um, and I mean, you really can't count on all the starters to continue their success. So they need to get someone who's been consistent for the last few years, has very good numbers, 3.5 ERA. I think it'd be a great pickup for the Orioles and more realistic than a guy like Zach Grinke at this point. And wouldn't cost as much prospect wise. I would honestly love to talk about the Baltimore Orioles, how they've been a surprise, Buck Showalter, all those guys, Adam Jones. Uh, but those are more things in the lengthier conversation about the surprises, all-star game, futures game, which will be in our next podcast of Birds and Bears coming up very soon. But uh, this is kind of a quick headline type thing, rundown, I would like to say, of LB All Access. So let's go to the next one. As Brian Fuentes, an older pitcher, not huge news here as he's been designated for an assignment, not a big surprise either as he has ERA is about 6.5 at this point. Um, and so obviously the Cardinals will be interested in him. Why? Because they need left-handed pitching. And, you know, they honestly, a big part of the Colby Rasmus trade last year and a big part that helped them win the World Series was getting Mark Zepchinski, but he has been, like, terrible this year. I mean, mid-five ERAs, 
His control has been out of whack. You know, recently he started to figure it out, but then tonight he gives up two hits and two walks. So you can't really trust him at this point. Now, Barrett Browning, someone who was a nobody and then developed his secondary stuff, he hasn't allowed a run in four and two-thirds innings. But again, that's only four and two-thirds innings, but very promising for him. He's pitching great, great secondary stuff, someone to watch there. But uh, do I want the Cardinals to acquire this guy as a Cardinal fan? No. A few years ago, yes. I mean, we haven't had prime relievers in a while. We trade away Chris Perez. A lot of other things. I mean, a lot of problems here. I would love for the Cardinals to go after a guy like Jonathan Broxson uh, or another better left-handed reliever, maybe Bastardo from the Phillies, but not a guy like this, like Brian Foote says. This is not an upgrade. This is just another J.C. Romero type, and, you know, happened to him. That last line about, uh, you know, what happened to him, it made it sound like he died or something. No, I mean, J.C. Romero, he's had a great career, and I think he just, he struggled, obviously. We've gone through a lot of a revolving door of left-handed relievers, or just relievers in general, trying to find the right one, and we just haven't. So I think they need to go out and get a deal for someone who's going to be more promising for them, someone like Jonathan Broxton, or maybe Bastardo, or someone. I mean, you need to fix the, the bullpen problem, because it's been their main problem this year. Moving on here, as I've been talking about the Cardinals still, you see a picture of Justin Upton. This is pretty big news, honestly. Justin Upton, I think this time, will be traded because of a few things. If the Diamondbacks are seriously courting him around, that means they want him out of there. I mean, really, you don't see... A lot of baseball executives think the same way, too. You don't see a team you know, court their 24-year-old randomly. There's a reason why they're doing that, not just because he's struggling. You wait on players like that. Did you see him perform last year? He is an all-star. He's an MVP candidate. He's 24 years old. He's locked up for many, many years. It's kind of the Ubaldo Jimenez situation that I sense uh, in Arizona. And their GM is not afraid to make a big deal. And he's very open-minded to any deal. So either he really likes Justin Upton and he's still just being open-minded about trading a 24-year-old locked up, um, you know, one of the best outfielders in baseball who has just struggled a little bit, or he seriously wants to trade Justin Upton. And I think he seriously does, you know, does want to trade Justin Upton. The, the quarters that he's courting to, I mean, again, any team would love to have Justin Upton. The question is who would seriously have them for kind of a short-term and long-term effect. I think the Pirates are the perfect candidate, and they have the uh, the depth in the farm system to get them. So many top pitching prospects, Garrett Cole, and now Mark Appel, who's not eligible to be traded. Uh, James uh, Italian, who probably will be in this deal if it happens. Starling Marte, I mean, there's just so many pitching prospects. I think they will get a deal done for Justin Upton or Carlos Quinton. Sorry about kind of running through all the headlines, but that is kind of how this show goes. If you like it, please comment or like or subscribe or whatever. Just leave your general feedback on the first episodes of MLB All Access here. Most of them will probably be a little longer, but um, I I'm going to have to uh, get going here. So again, MLB All Access um, a new show where you can call in here. Just leave a comment or a message below if you want to be in a show talking or asking a question. Uh, we ran through a few different headlines. Next time we'll run through a few more and watch for the next episode of Birds and Bears as we'll go in depth for the All-Star Game, Futures Game, Home Run Derby, and more. Good luck to everyone participating in the Home Run Derby. Great job to everyone who was in the Futures Game today. Obviously a lot of great prospects. We'll talk about them soon, fairly soon. Uh, and my picks for the Home Run Derby, I think for the NL team, Carlos Beltran, definitely someone to watch, and Andrew McCutcheon. And for the AL team, I really like Mark Trumbo. I hope he does well, and I think he will do well. Mark Trumbo and Carlos Beltran are my picks. Thanks.